Welcome back, everybody. Um, we were just working on doing a geometric series. So something like uh, 3, 6, 12, 24, something like that. Let's do one more, 48. These are the first five terms of a geometric sequence. How do I know? If I check, I'm multiplying by the same amount each time. There we go. So that is indeed uh, a geometric sequence. The first term being 3, the fifth term being 48. Uh, the ratio, the common ratio, is 2. So something like that. Now, how do you add them? So a series is when you add them, like this. And, well, you can just take your calculator and add up those five numbers. Not hard. Uh, but what if I wanted the first 100 terms of that? series. That's when you start wanting a formula. So if I take a look at this, I'm going to run through this example and I'll show you kind of the idea of how to get the formula. This is more of interest for the HL students and in fact if they look in their textbook you'll have a description of how to do it just algebraically. But let's just take an example like this. So this is the sum of the first five terms like that. Now here's the trick. Some clever mathematician came up with this, not me. What they did is they multiplied both sides of this equation by the ratio, the common ratio, in this case 2. So 2s5 would be equal to, and I'm writing it above, hopefully you'll see why, uh, in a bit. It will be equal to, you'll just double all these terms. And what I can do is I can subtract these two equations and two, at two sums minus one sum is equal to one single sum. Now here, take a look at these numbers. If I'm subtracting these, you'll notice that 6 minus 6 cancels, 12 minus 12, 24 minus 24, 48 minus 48, leaving me only with 96 minus 3, which is equal to 90. So I didn't actually add them. I only needed uh, the last term, and I subtracted the first term. Actually, it's, no, it's not quite right. The next term after the last term. So the last term was 48. The term after that was 96. I take that term, and I subtract it from the first term. And you'll always get the sum. It's kind of interesting. You can do the same thing by simply going with, this is HL time, uh, take me a second here, but you take, um, to add up your numbers, you would take the first term plus the next term, plus the next term, plus the next term, etc., etc., etc. And that would be the sum, in this case, of the first um, four terms. And what you would do is you would multiply it by r. So you get u1r plus u1r squared plus u1r cubed plus u1r to the 4. And you would subtract the 2. So I would get, huh, now what does this become? It becomes rs to the 4 minus s to the 4. Hmm, not so easy. And then what about the right-hand side? Well, this minus this cancels, this minus this cancels, this minus this cancels. So you still end up with that kind of pattern, like this. And if I factor out that, I get r minus 1 here. And then I can divide by r minus 1. And on top here, I can factor out the u1. And you get a nice little pattern like that. You can do this and generalize it, and you'll end up with a nice formula. And let me scroll down and reveal to you what's in your formula booklet. Ta-da! Okay, so this is what's given to you. This is for the sequence. So that's the thing we were using the last for, to know a specific term. And this is for the sum. And what you do is you end up with this formula here. Now you might notice, hold on, there's two formulas. There's this one and the one beside it, this one. They are actually exactly the same, 
we tend to use this one when r is greater than 1, and we tend to use this one when r is less than 1. If r is equal to 1, you get a little problem in the denominator, because 1 minus 1 is 0, dividing by 0 is very bad. So this does not work when r equals 1, but if you think about it, r equals to 1 means that your population is not increasing, it's actually staying the same. It's like 200,000 is, the, if that's your first term, then the next term will be 200,000, the term after that will be 200,000, so on and so on. So it's, you don't need any fancy math to add a bunch of those terms up. So let's use it. So a geometric series, 2, 6, 18, find the common ratio, easy. In this case, it is 3. And B, find the sum of the first 10 terms. So I'm going to use that formula. So if I go take a look here, you could just use your formula booklet. By the way, I said, you know, use this one if it, use the first if it's great, R is greater than 1. If the ratio is less than 1, use the second one. If you don't get that right, it doesn't matter. The formulas will work out anyway. It's just a little easier when you're working out the uh, arithmetic. So to finish this off like this, so I want the sum of the first 10 terms. So u1 here is 2, r is 3, n is 10. So, and then r is, what did I say, 3. I can do a little bit with this, but again, I'm stubbornly hanging on to not using my calculator. just give you a ridiculously large number. Uh, again, with geometric um, sequences and series, your numbers get huge very, very fast. So, calculator, for sure. Okay, application. Um, Aziza receives an allowance of 2,500 Egyptian pounds. So, each month the amount is increased by 2%. Again, remember, when you see this, you're thinking geometric. So don't even kind of question that. So how much does Aziza receive in month number six? So in this one, they're not asking for the sum, they're asking for specifically month number six. So I'm gonna use this formula, the sequence formula. Okay, think about what they're asking you. They don't want the sum, they want a specific term. Now, what do I know? Well, I know the first term is 2,500, right? Um, now, the second time, it'll be a little bit more. How much more? Um, so, what's the ratio? Well, remember, it's not 2%. It's 100%, the original 2,500, plus 2% of that. So it turns out to be 100% plus 2%, which is 102%, which is, and you can simply write this right away, R is equal to 1.02. So in this case, um, in month number 6, that will be U6 equals 2,500. 1.02, 6 minus 1 on the exponent. All right, fine. I'll admit it. I do have a calculator here with me. I'll work it out. Two thousand seven hundred and sixty, and let's go to the nearest. Is it a penny in Egypt? I forget. But let's go two decimal places. That's plenty. So there we go. EGP, because Mr. Lacoste loves his units. Okay, that's your answer for that one. Part A, anyway. B, calculate the total amount that uh, Aziza receives in one year. Ah, now that is a sum. So now I have to switch formula. We're talking about this one now. Probably haven't memorized it yet, so remember, formula, booklet, there it is. OK, 
Okay, so just copy that out. So what was it? U1. Um, R is bigger than 1, so I'll use the usual one. So it'll be R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. There we go. So I want it after one year, so that's 12 months, I do believe. And this is original amount, 1.02, 12 minus 1 divided by 1.02 minus 1. You can clean that up a little bit. Don't mess up your order of operation. So let's see what this gives me. Yes, I have a calculator. I get thirty three thousand five hundred and thirty. 0.22 Egyptian pounds. Now, if you just check that, if you didn't get any increase, if you just got 2,500 every month, it'd be 30,000. So you see, this is this is logical. You get a little bit more. So the 30,000, 33,530. So there you go. That's how you get it. Okay, one more. Um, Alexa wins a prize in the lottery. She receives 8,000 Canadian, um, not 8,000 Canadians, but Canadian dollars. The first month, uh, 6,000 Canadian dollars. The second month, 4,500, et cetera, et cetera. So for a total of six months. So actually she gets quite a bit of money. So calculate how much she receives in month six. So again, it's the exact same thing as I was talking about the last problem, a little bit repetitive actually. Maybe I should skip this. Um, so it's the term that I'm looking for. So I'll use this formula. And I know that it's month six that I'm looking for. So that's the first month, get 8,000, times R, which is, I don't know. So let's stop for pause for a moment. I need that number. And this will be 6 minus 1. So how about R? Didn't ask for it, but it doesn't give it to me. So how do I get R? Well, I can multiply and divide two consecutive terms. What's that equal to? 8 divided by 6. It's 4 divided by 3. That's 1.33. But I'll leave it as a fraction. There you go. Now we're back in business. Actually, I did that wrong. I should edit this whole thing, but I won't. Everyone makes mistakes. Because I divided the wrong two terms. The consecutive term should be the second term divided by the first term. So it should have been. Somebody must have been screaming out there. 6 divided by 8, so 3 divided by 4, so 0 0.75. That's what it should be. I knew it should have been less than 1 uh, because it's going down. It's decreasing. If the ratio is less than 1, your numbers are decreasing. So, there you go. Learn something from your mistakes. $1898.44 Canadian dollars. We use... Uh, the kind of dollar sign, but with only one line across. Americans use two lines. Don't ask me why. Um, oh yeah, there's a second part to this. Calculate the total prize money for the six months. So then you're using this one, right? Right. So that'll be U1, R to the N minus one. Now, in, actually in this case, I'm gonna use that second form, one minus R to the N divided by R1 minus R. 
it'll come out to be the same. It's just that this one you avoid negatives a little bit. It doesn't matter. Uh, so first term, 1 minus 0 0.75 raised to the power of 6 divided by 1 minus 0 0.75. So that will be, let's see here, twenty six thousand three hundred and four point. Six nine Canadian dollars. Okay, so there you go. That's a nice little sum. I wouldn't mind that. So that's how you use these formulas. Just be careful when you're using your calculator. Order of operation always important. Uh, don't skip steps. I'm pretty good with the calculator, so I can do it. Here's a different one. It looks really simple because it's a very short question. But uh, find this sum. Now this time, you know the first term. And you know the nth term, but you don't know how many terms you have. You also know what the ratio is, so you're multiplying by 3 each time. Check that out. So you have this. So if I try for this formula, for the sum, because that's what I want, uh, if I take a look at it, like this, um, notice that I can't do it because I don't know what n is. I don't know what that exponent is. Well, that's unfortunate. So first, use this formula. And it'll allow you to find n, I think. Okay? Uh, another technique, by the way, that I've seen some people use is they take their calculator... And you'll always you'll have your calculator for this question because the numbers are too big, and they just on their calculator keep multiplying by nine uh, by three. So one times three times three times three times three until they get to nineteen thousand six hundred and eighty-three, and they keep track of how many times they do it, so they'll know what n is. It doesn't take that long. You'd be surprised. In fact, just just for laughs, one times. 3 equals, okay, times 3 equals, and on the TI-84, I know I can keep doing this. If I just press enter now, it'll just keep doing it automatically for me. So that's uh, N3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. N is 10. <laughs> I, literally, I just pressed enter on my calculator 10 times. Or not, not even 10 times. So I found n to be equal to 10. Use calculator. But you crazy people that want to use a, a more difficult uh, technique, uh, what you would do is use that uh, back to my formula. You would want to use this. So you know that the nth term is 19,000. 683. You know the first term is 1. You know the ratio is 3. N minus 1. You see you only have one unknown there. The problem is, is how do you solve when the unknown is in the exponent like this? Now you have to learn something called logarithms. Good news, we will learn that. Just not, I didn't do it right away. So you kind of are stuck on these if you wanted to do it. I'll show you how to do it. You can simply memorize this because the buttons are on your calculator, so no big deal. But if the thing you're looking for is in the exponent, I can rewrite this equation by writing what's on the exponent here is equal to log, yes, short for logarithm, short for really dumb name that mathematicians have used, of 19,683 divided by the log of the base 3. And you just do that on your calculator. There's no other way of doing that. So there's, if you look, there'll be a little button, log 
so 19,683 divided by the log of 3. And I get 9. You're all like, no, you said 10. Well, remember, this is n minus 1. So n equals 10. Okay? You will learn this. Don't worry, okay? Um, but like I said, use your calculator. You can find that in seconds. This is ridiculously fast, okay? Now, remember, that's not even what I was looking for. I was looking for the sum, but at least now I know it's the sum of the first 10 terms. So I know it's the first term, 3 to the 10 minus 1 divided by um, 3 minus 1. So it's equal to 3 to the 10 minus 1 divided by 2. And now that I have my calculator and I'm having fun with it, uh, I get 29,524. Okay? So good times. Do I have any more than that? Looks like I do. Nope. Bummer. That's it for today. See ya.